Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Um, today is Friday, February the 12th. And uh, I'm gonna start this off by saying Reverend Ike. If you don't know who he is, go look him up. He has many videos on, you. he has passed away, but he has uh, a lot of videos on YouTube. I often listen to his sermons when I'm on the treadmill, or sometimes I just got my AirPods in and I'm going around the house doing laundry, vacuuming, cleaning, or whatever. He's very inspirational. He has one, at least one book that I know of. This is it. I got it on Amazon. And it's called Health, Joy, and Prosperity for You, a Science of Living Study Guide by Dr. Frederick Eicher Reckon Cotter, or Reverend Ike for short. Um... Reverend Ike says there are two most powerful sentences in the English language, and they are, I am and thank you. I am. That's how God introduced himself to Moses at the burning bush. I am that I am. And we have a little bit of the divine spark in us, that little bit of God, that which is I am. Reverend Ike calls it God in me. Some people call it the divine spark. Uh, there's a little bit of um, this concept in the Transformers movies with the all spark. And I know some people call it the all. And after that movie came out, some of the younger people started calling it the all spark. Um, anything you put after I am, you will manifest. I am happy. I am healthy. I am prosperous. And it's not enough to just say it, but you got to believe it. And thank you is the shortest prayer of gratitude there is out there. In the Bible, when Jesus would perform his miracles, he would always start with, thank you. Thank you, God, for healing this leper. Thank you, God, for feeding the multitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, with that in mind, I want to say I am so glad that many of you have found this channel and liked my videos and found some value in the things that I I teach and I pass along from my own experiences and my teachers. And thank you for tuning in uh, every day I post a video. Um, I hope to see this channel grow uh, and reach many more people. Um, excuse me. So the title of this video is going to be Never Be Afraid to Start Over. Um, I have had to start over many times in my life. Uh, I have been fired from several jobs, and a younger me would probably be, be embarrassed to tell you that, but that all changed for me with um, Kathy Griffin. I love Kathy Griffin, even with the whole <coughs> Trump thing, I'm a fan of her. I used to watch my life on the D-list, and I always tuned in to watch her um, comedy special, but she said something on one or either, or it may have been in her book, official book club selection, I can't remember. It was either on TV or in her book, but she said something to the effect of, you know, she got fired from jobs where um, it just wasn't the right fit for her, but she stayed, she was unhappy, but she stayed because, you know, she was drawing a check and it gave her a certain amount of security, even though she wasn't really happy in that position. I was also in those positions. I stayed at certain jobs where I absolutely hated it, where I was being abused, I was being mistreated, and but I, I went into work every day and I tried to do my best because, you know, it, it was the whole fear of the unknown. If I quit, where would I go? How long will it take me to find another job? At least I'm drawing a check here. And, uh, you know, I think it was also Oprah who said something along the lines of, like, you know, when you get fired from a job, that's the universe telling you that that's not where you're supposed to be. And often what happens is there are signs that come to you before your termination. You know, you may get a verbal warning. You may get a written warning. And what happens is when you ignore those signs, they keep coming at you until you're confronted with it. And that's when the termination happens. So being fired from the job should be looked upon. I know it's a traumatic experience sometimes. Sometimes it's a very, it's like a burden off of you, you know. But either way, you're forced into this habit of having, forced into 
the, the cycle of having to change your routine, change your behavior, change your life in some way. So that's where the blessing is. Even though you're going through that fear of, am I going to be able to get unemployment? Am I going to be able to keep my home? Am I going to be able to you know, buy groceries and make my car payment? How is my life going to change? I need to find a new job. You know, There's a blessing in um, that trauma to where you get to take, up or take steps to better your life. Um, also, there have been times in my life when I've been homeless. I've lost my home. Uh, there was a time in my life when uh, I lost my job. I got in trouble with the law. Uh, I had to go through community service. Uh, it was called pretrial intervention to where I basically did community service, which I did my community service at a library and um, paid, made some restitution. And that way, no charges were filed against me and I have no record. But during that time, I lost my home and I had to move back in with a family member while I was working this job and doing my community service and paying restitution. But you know what? That opened up the door for me when my community service was done and they told me I was free to leave town. I moved to Buf from Great Falls, South Carolina to Beaufort, South Carolina, where I got a job at Winn-Dixie and I was staying with a friend. Well, lo and behold, maybe a year six months, eight months after I started that job, uh, when Dixie went bankrupt. But that opened up the door for me to come to Whidbey Island because uh, I was able to get unemployment. I was able to transfer my unemployment here to Whidbey Island. And I was considered management in my position I was in at Win Dixie. And so I got like a big uh, bonus, uh, um, not a termination bonus. I forget what it's called. Like when you leave a company, you get like this bonus or whatever. Uh, so, and then my friend I was living with was in the military. He moved here to Whidbey Island. He took me along with him. So I had a place to stay when I got here and I had an income and then to get me through until I found a job here. So, you know, when I say never be afraid to start over, I, I say that from experience because um, when you, you have to start over in these incidences, you know, I used to be a very negative thinker. Whenever change was introduced in my life, I used to automatically assume it was going to make my life worse in some way. Now, and I don't know when it happened, I can't pinpoint the exact moment in my life where it happened, but now, whenever, you know, I've learned in my old age to make friends with change. And so when change is introduced in my life, I just automatically assume it's going to make my life better rather than worse. And that is such a huge blessing and gift from God, the universe, spirit, whatever it is that has allowed me to sort of um, trust the universe and trust the unfolding of my life because I really feel like I was meant to come here. You know, Dean Harris was born in South Carolina, but Carolina Dean was born in Washington State. And had I not gone through all these experiences, I wouldn't be here today to share all this with you. Um, excuse me a moment. So, a couple of days ago, maybe even a week, I don't know, I posted a video called Your Vision Journal. And I explained about um, what a vision journal was, how it was sort of similar to a vision board. And it could be, you know, a vision board of your writing, like writing your story the way it is. I mean, the way you want it to be rather than the way it is. And, you know, gluing pictures in of things that you want and sort of taking the vision board concept and putting it into the form of a journal to attract what it is you want. And I even remember over the course of reading an entry out of that vision journal for you guys, I even noticed, oh, I wrote this in future tense rather than present tense. And the reason we do that is when you, when you project for something, when you meditate for something, when you affirm for something, you always want to do it in the present tense because if you're doing it in the future tense, meaning I will be rich, I will be healthy, I will be etc. You're putting that into the future so it's always ahead of you, out of your reach. Um, you know, they say tomorrow never gets here because when it gets here, it's today. So if you're putting that in the future, it's always out of your reach. It's somewhere out there in the unmanifest. It's always out. So you want to say, I am rich. I am healthy. I am prosperous. I am loved. I am inspired. Because that puts it in the ever-present now where all potential exists. 
And um, so I realized that when I was reading that entry for you and uh, I ended that video and then the very next day I went to um, my thrift store. There's actually two thrift stores in my town that I like to go to and they both have metaphysical sections. The first one is their metaphysical physical sections about this much space on the bottom shelf in a corner. And usually when I go there, there's um, Sylvia Brown books. Now, you know, a lot of has come out about Sylvia Brown after her death. I initially liked her. And then, you know, a lot of this stuff came out about her and then like her book, Adventures of a Psychic. Going back, I reared it again. I liked it from the point of view of a fictional story rather than something that supposedly actually transpired. Uh, anyway, there's also a lot of stuff by John Edwards and um, there's, there seems to be a lot of ghost hunting type stuff in the metaphysical section. Once in a while I'll find something on Wicca, usually a beginning or a beginner's book and uh, herbs. Sometimes there'll be something on herbs but I'll always look in that section just to see because you never know what you're going to find. So then I went to the other thrift store that I like to go to and their metaphysical section fluctuates. Sometimes I go in there and it's two, three shelves about this wide, three shelves full of books. Uh, that day I went in and it was one shelf and it had maybe this many books in it. Oops, excuse me. And probably the majority of those books were on feng shui. Now I'm not really interested in feng shui. I do have a couple of books I bought here uh, for research purposes. Uh, to read. I even sat down on the computer and made up a, um, what do you call it, a floor plan of my apartment for the, you know, to look into the feng shui energies of my apartment. And maybe I'll do a video on that in the future if y'all are interested in it. Uh, I do have a book that sort of combines um, feng shui and astrology um, that I, you know, again, I want to read it and look into it at some point. Um, but for the most part, I'm not really that interested in feng shui or I, none of the titles there really interested me but what happened was that metaphysical section was right in my line of sight but I happened to look up and above the metaphysical section was a sociology section and I saw right away this book right here it's called write it down make it happen happen knowing what you want and getting it by Henriette Ann Clauser author of put your heart on paper and writing on both sides of the brain I want to put this up here for you guys to see it I saw it like this when I found it. I saw the spine, write it down, make it happen. And I grabbed that book off the shelf. I didn't even crack it open. I didn't look at the content. I didn't read of it. I knew that this was the reason that I came to the thrift store today to get this book. And so I took it home. And as I read it, I tried to read like it. I was really busy this week. So I tried to read like one chapter a night. And then there's like some um, exercises at the end of each chapter, some journal exercises, and I grabbed some scratch paper and I tried to do the journal exercises, but I just felt like I was moving a little slow. So what I decided to do is, actually last night uh, was Thursday. I came home from work. I took me a little nap um, because I knew I was off today. I took a vacation day today. Monday is President's Day. I got a four day weekend here ahead of me. So I took a little nap. When I woke up, I made supper. And then after I uh, had my supper and cleaned up the kitchen, I crawled up in my chair and I read the rest of the book, which is a little, um, let's see, there's, I want to tell you how many pages in this book, 250 pages in this book. And I think I, I started around maybe the 50. So I read 200 pages last night. And so I wanted to read the whole book and then I wanted to go back and maybe do do the journal exercises and while reading this book it really confirmed a lot of things that i'd already been doing for instance writing in the present tense writing down your goals whenever you do magic whenever you do your spells and you write down your petition you're really writing down a goal whether it's a person's name or an affirmation or a prayer that is your goal written on paper um there is also a description in here um, she calls it letters from God and she describes how she would write a letter to God in her journal and then God would answer through her writing. And again, she calls it letters to God, but to me, it was very clearly a, um, 
example of automatic writing. And I've given you guys a, uh, a video on automatic writing and on my Instagram page, I've shown several examples of um, my experiences, pictures of my experiences with automatic writing, things that have come through. Ah, excuse me. So the reason I'm calling this um, title of this video is never be afraid to start over is because I, after reading this, I put my um, vision journal away because I realized there were some things in it, you know, that I was probably not doing quote unquote correct or things that I could do better. And, you know, just because I'm a teacher doesn't mean I'm not still learning myself. Some lessons we need to relearn. We get so set in our ways, we forget that there might be a better way to do it and we stick with our way. So with that in mind, I decided to start over. And, you know, when I go to the thrift stores, I often look at the blank books and the blank journals. And sometimes, you know, they have pages torn out of them. Some of them are new. Some of them have pages torn out of them. And I try to see, oh, can I clean this up a little bit and make it look a little bit neater? And so I had bought this book. As you can see, it says single cash. It's actually an accounting book for you to, you know, keep track of your accounting. And I thought, well, that's this was great. This will be perfect because I'm being accountable for my thoughts and my words and my deeds and what I write down and what I want to manifest. And so uh, I made a sticker with some labels and I just wrote on that sticker, write it down, make it happen. And this is the journal that I'm going to use when I go back and do the exercises in this book. And as you can see, um, what I did was I copied the first exercise. Let me cover up this page. I copied the first exercise and uh, on a copy machine, and I cut it out and I put it in the book so you see what the exercise was. And on this page is where I do the first exercise, uh, which is basically a form of free writing where you just write your goals down on paper and you don't really limit yourself. Uh, you know, no matter how big or small the goal is, you just write it down without thinking. And then you can go back and clarify it later. And that's, as a writer, that's actually my philosophy. When people tell me, oh, I want to write, but I don't know how, well, my, ph my philosophy is just do it, like Nike. You know, when someone tells me they want to write, I said, well, just write. You know, as a writer, your job is to write. Writers write and editors edit. So you just get it out. Then you can always go back and clean it up. So anyway, like I said, I put my vision journal aside. I am starting over. I'm going to do all the exercises in this book, record it in this journal, and I didn't bring it out here with me, but I also bought a brand new journal so that if I want to start my vision journal over, I can start over with a brand new journal or I can just rip those pages out of that journal or mark them out or whatever and start with that. But anyway, uh, I may do some more videos on this book and maybe share with you my experiences and things that I've learned uh, just to see, you know, see what comes up. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said, it, it's Friday. It's a four day weekend for me. I hope it's a nice weekend for you. Uh, get out there and think about what it is you want. What do you want? What do you want? What do you guys want? Write it down and then make it happen.